in my teeth. Come on, Papa. Welcome everybody to another YouTube video. Yes, I'm keeping on top of these. I'm actually quite proud of myself. Hang on. It's a really dirty habit. It's actually how I get my hard jaw. <laughs> hard jaw. I seriously believe, and I'm not even like joking about this, my <laughs> chewing habit, whether it's little lollies or gum, I've been doing for years. I always like chewing on something uh, and I really truly believe it hardened my jaw over time. Because everyone's like, why is your jaw so hard? How do you get a hard jaw? Uh, chew chewy guys. And then I actually, and this is like no joke, I Googled it and it's a thing. It's an actual thing. Anyway, today I'm going to be deadlifting and I thought it would be really interesting and helpful for you guys uh, to be putting in some tips. I'm a sumo lifter. I do do conventionals as well, but I really adapted sumos into my training because I find it easier, better on my back. I've got short levers. It's more mechanically efficient for my body personally. Everyone's different. I'll always use conventionals not so much as a primary movement, but a secondary to my training to strengthen my sumo. So today, I'm gonna to be going through the sumo since a lot of people um, don't know much about it. I'm gonna be teaching you some tips and tricks, uh, what's helped me in regards to uh, the sumo, and um, hopefully something that you can take home to implement into your own deadlifting, and maybe even try sumos if you haven't before. So this is a really good um, opportunity to do so and learn something. Yeah, so I'm gonna get into it now. Um, First things first, I always come into the gym and spend at least 15 minutes stretching out my body. I'll usually stretch the muscles that I'm going to be working for the day. So for me, with a sumo lift, I'm gonna be using my hips, my quads, the glutes. So I'm gonna be, and my hamstrings, sorry. So I'm gonna be like uh, working on all of these movements, really pumping blood into the muscle and making sure I'm all warm and ready so that I can get into a really good position. If I don't do this with the sumo being such a technical lift, I'm gonna find it really hard to um, you know, get my hips open and stuff like that. So stretching is super important. So you might notice in this video that I'm doing a hell of a lot of work, uh, warm ups. This might look a little bit excessive uh, and maybe it is, but for me, I've really gotten to know my body over time and I find spending this amount of energy and time into warming up makes my body personally work better. I feel better after training, I feel better going into training and my body loves me for it. You may not need to do as much as what I have, but I've been doing this for about eight years and I've found this works best for me. So when it comes to your training, there's no right or wrong. You figure out your own body and how you feel and do what works best for you. Um, I find as you go along your journey, that is the best way to really um, get the most out of your training and the most out of your physical growth as well. So I have got another video which has a structured warm up for you to try. I'll, I'll touch that here uh, and you can save that and do that later. But for me today, it was just really about feeling where I'm sore most or not sore most. Uh, and I'm just going through the motions. So my first tip when it comes to the sumo is you want to stay as upright as possible. So I always like to guide myself down and get as far down as I can without tipping over and falling backwards. So that's a really good place to start. I'm the missing link. Open your eyes. What do you see? My vision complete. Put them as black as they come. Come. Even shoot black when they pop. I'ma shoot back when they come. Bang. They wanna attack, but I'm numb. I'm numb. Just gets the black on my bum. Hi, I'm, I'm moving back to the sun. The sun. That just right cause it's fun. Got my lady wearing all black like a nun. Make a deposit. Leave them with some knowledge. Honey, granted, I ain't safe for college. My kids gonna get all this. Uncle Sam, what it all in the yard. So now you'll also notice that I'm not just jumping to a heavyweight first, I'm slowly, progressively going up. Um, you may feel comfortable to work in five kilo jumps or 10 kilos, whatever suits your capabilities. Um, so the next part that I, I always like to give deadlift advice in little chunks, not like, sorry, in little implements, not in a big chunk, because sometimes it can feel really overwhelming. So the next thing I'm thinking about after I'm thinking about standing up, upright is um, making sure that I'm lifting with my chest port first instead of being bent over. So when I think about going down, I'm trying to lengthen my arms as much as possible because a lot of people ask, how, where do you start? Do you start at the bottom? Like how far do you go down? I like to think as far as you can stay upright, 
and reach the bar is where you should stop. So for me, the moment I can grab that bar, I know that's gonna be where my position is. Um, and that's something really good to think about. Your arms may be longer than mine, so you might actually start higher and that's okay too. But you wanna try and lengthen your arms as much as possible while staying upright as much as possible. And the moment you get your bar, chest up and guide with your chest and pull. Don't know if that's too much. That might not resonate with you, but try and think about that when you're about to lift up. Another thing I learned earlier on is to set up a camera and film yourself when you lift. So I get Jamie to film me and I'll put it on Instagram, but most of the time no one films him and he just gets a little tripod and sets it up. And he doesn't really post it, he usually looks at it as a point of reference to see how he could improve the lift or is his bum coming up first or what's wrong. So it's really good to look at it on an outside point of view and see what's happening because it might be very different to what's, what you're feeling compared to what it actually looks like. So if I was to super analyze myself just then, first rep looked good, second rep was good. Okay, third, okay, it's just looking real good. You'll notice my setup actually changed just then when I lifted. Um, this helps me when the bar gets heavier get into a better position. Um, so I'm one of those lifters that change halfway through. Um, it's just something, a habit that I, I don't know, created ages ago. I just find that sometimes if I was to lift heavy straight from the bottom and pull that my hips get under too much load, whereas when I set up into it and then come down, I'm able to have some momentum and it takes a bit of pressure off my hips. That might not be the same with everybody, but once again, it comes back to that getting to know your own body kind of thing, see what works for you and get comfortable into it. There is no right or wrong when it comes to lifting. And it's something that I've just really had to adapt because I used to think there was this right and wrong way and he does it like that and she says do it like this. If it's safe, <laughs> if it's safe, do what works best for you. So to give you an example of what I just changed, as it was lighter for me, I was picking the bar straight up. As it gets heavier, I change. And what I do is I'll get down, put tension on the bar, get some momentum, and then push my hips into it. This helps me lift the weight, get into a better position, and takes a little bit of pressure off my hips as opposed to lifting it straight up. Um, yeah, like I said, everyone's different. That just seems to work better for me as I get heavier. Yeah. Yeah. As it gets heavier, I like to start using chalk. This is because I use an overhand, underhand grip and I don't use gloves or anything like that or straps. So I've only got my hands as my equipment. Uh, and after a while I get sweaty um, and the bar will start to slip. So I'll usually make sure I have chalk handy wherever I'm deadlifting, whether I take it to a gym in a little box or some gyms might get really funny about the mess, which if that's the case, you can use liquid chalk, which goes nowhere. So that's another option. But um, yeah, I'll always make sure I have some on tab because you do get sweaty and things do slip out of your hands. Um, otherwise you could use straps if you felt like you weren't quite ready to use your hands. But anyway, we've got 120 on the bar. Um, I'm going to be putting those things into motion which we talked about, so keeping my chest up, arms lengthened, um, you know, staying as upright as possible. As So I just had a rewatch of the 130 that I did and I noticed on the second rep my bum popped slightly and sometimes that can be an indication that I'm not being patient off the floor. 
So when you grab the bar, you don't want to be yanking it. And I'll show you what yanking it looks like. You don't want to do this and then lift. You want to make sure that you've got tension. Shouldn't be doing a, com a conventional. You want to make sure that you've got tension on the bar and then be patient and lift. It might take a while to get up and that's okay. Take your time. You don't have to rush it. Um, but yeah, make, if you want to shake it and get motivated, that's fine. But as long as there's tension already there and then you're lifting, that's good. Just avoid that lift because it's going to make things pop and it's going to just be all over the place. So just be really aware of that. She said we can't have it. Another tip to making this an easier lift for yourself is making sure that you keep the bar close and it doesn't get away from you. The further that this bar drifts away, the harder that you're going to have to work. Key points into keeping the bar close is to make sure that your hips are open at all times. The moment your legs collapse, it's going to push the bar away. You can already see that, it's rolling away from me. Um, so keep your hips open and always be pushing the bar back into your body. So you want the bar to have a straight line when it comes up, as if it was gonna go past you and all the way up. Um, yeah, so that's the goal. If the bar, if you're over the bar, you're not gonna get that straight line. So just keep that in mind. Um, number one, if it felt heavy, and number two, if you are, your legs are collapsing. It's just like a, a mental cue, I guess. We can't have it. Life costs too much just a bounce. I said let's live lavish. Actually really hurt. What did you do? When I lift, I've got the bar, nails, hands around the bar, and because my nails are long and I've got the bar so close, I rip at my skin with my nails. Um so sometimes I get some scratches. Oh, I can't breathe, man. <laughs> Every time I deadlift, I always like to finish my last set um, with as many as possible. Um, sometimes I am structured, like with say five sets of four or five sets of five or whatever it may be. Um, but most of the time I always like to finish it off with a see what's in the tank. No matter what weight I'm working with, it might be 120, might be 140. Um, yeah just something I've always done and so my major tip there is have some intensity when you train you know if it's feeling easy all the time you're not going to get stronger you're not going to build the muscle you want to want to build you always have to push that one percent more every single time you train and it adds up I was reading something today about giving one percent every day and if you accumulate that over a year and do it every single day it's a pretty large percentage percentage Come take a seat, mount up the feet, I'm hungry like a man fast in this week. It's time to eat, back from the dead, but don't repeat. I'm the missing link, open your eyes, what do you seek? My vision complete. Uh -huh. Them as black as they come, come. even shoot black when they... I'ma shoot back when I come. Bang. They wanna attack, but I numb. I numb. Just gets the back on my bum. Hot. I'm, I'm moving back to the sun. The sun. I just rap cause it's fun. Got my lady wearing all black like a nun. Make a deposit. Leave them with some knowledge. Hundred grand and I ain't safe for college. My kids gon' get all this. Uncle Sam, what it all when he yard it? Even the land when I bought it. Add it up. Yo, we got a problem. Get out the way if you ain't tryna solve it. Let's hey. paint it all. After my strength work, I like to move into my hypertrophy work. So this is the bodybuilding component of my workout. A couple of things just to really work, pump blood, um, blood into the muscle um, and just really pump it up. Because I wanna be, I wanna feel strong, but I also wanna look strong. <laughs> so I, I like to join these components together in my training. 
But anyway, that's the end of my session. If you're interested in this type of training, you can access my programs on the Sweat app. I have a program called Lifting at Home, which is, if you are stuck at home, that would be appropriate for you. And I've also got um, a gym-based program called Build, which is what I basically did today. It's the same type of structure. Uh, so make sure you head across and check them out. Uh, thank you for tuning into today's video. Uh, your likes, your comments, your thoughts about any of this means a lot to me, so please drop it below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would love to have you um, a part of this so I can keep putting these videos out and encourage you where you need it um, and give you some ideas with your own training. Yeah, so subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Other than that, I hope you have a great week and I'll catch you on the next video.